We're out for another day of bobcat hunting. I was going to go up to my main hunting area today um, and hunt with a friend, but today I decided to hunt in a different area, uh, much closer to home. So yeah, we're just going to do a little half day hunt and see if we can catch a bobcat. Hey, Tika, don't go too close to that edge, girl. Very beautiful little river here. Haven't been up here for, for quite a while. I don't really know what the bobcat population is like here. I know last year I found several uh, sets of tracks in the snow. Um, also found mountain lion tracks, bear tracks, fox tracks. So it's a pretty uh, game rich area, or it used to be at least. And yeah, we'll see what we can do. Okay, I need to pause really quick to fill you all in on what happened, because if I just show you the footage I filmed from this day, it won't make much sense. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that it usually takes my dogs and I quite a while to get a track rolling, if we ever do. I always make sure the dogs get some exercise in, but it is not uncommon for us to drive around all day with no real action to brag about. But that's just how bobcat hunting goes. But this day, I assure you, was different things happened extremely fast. Per our usual operating procedure, the blue pups went in the dog box and Cooley and Rue went up on top, live on the rig cam. Since I hadn't been in this area for a while, I wanted to roll slow, take my time, and make sure my wannabe rig dogs had plenty of opportunity to whiff up all the smells. A nice little road network weaves its way through this canyon with web-like clumps of roads branching off the main line. I took the first left, which immediately turned into switchbacks going straight uphill. I took in the sights as we gained elevation, then in short order, we were on top. That's when things got interesting. I was not expecting to find snow, but there it was, a light dusting, just enough on the road to show a track. Less than 60 seconds after acknowledging the white stuff, Rue erupted with the most booming strike I'd heard him make since he was a young puppy, strike an elk from the dog box. I stopped the truck and he dove off the back. Then I saw the tracks on the road. I could not believe it. Visual confirmation that what my young, aspiring rig dog had just struck was in fact the real thing. Cooley was wide open too. Her and Rue sprinted about 50 yards back down the road, then shot up the bank on the uphill side out of eyesight. I parked my truck and got out, tracker in hand, to watch their every move. Shortly after they crossed the road, going back uphill, they got it jumped, and it was undeniable. Then, it was a dead sprint race nearly 500 yards straight down the hill, dropping a thousand feet in elevation to the creek. Forward progress seized, and their GPS tracks consolidated on the tracker into tighter and tighter circles. Cooley was chop barking just like I had heard her do so many times before on coon trees, and Rue's raspy ball was filling in the sonic void of the canyon. I'm always hesitant to say it, because I've been fooled so many times in the past, but it was safe to say that they were treed, and I had to get my butt down there as fast as I possibly could. While I was getting ready to go, I dumped Bruno and Tika out of the box because one, they were losing their minds with all the excitement, and two, I wanted them to get on that cat tree. They ran up and down the road for a minute or two, then they too dove off down the obnoxiously steep hill. It was a perfect scenario for turning them in because the track was more or less a straight line down. And funny enough, I didn't see those two knuckleheads until they until I got to the tree. <coughs> A quick note about the location of this tree. It's hard to tell based on this frame, but the tree is right at the top of a rock cliff about 15 to 20 feet tall. 
When I got down to the dogs, they were actually treeing at the base of the cliff and actively trying to find their way up it. They knew the cat was up there, but they just couldn't figure out how to climb up the rocks. And I couldn't either at first. I ended up hiking down the creek about 30 yards to find a route up, and Cooley and Rue came and joined me. <coughs> You may have noticed that at first, the dogs weren't too tight on the tree. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not working with any award-winning tree dogs here, and they are still very new to chasing cats. But in this frame, I had been sitting with them at the tree for at least 20 minutes, which gave them some time to settle in. I was also observing something else happening. A cool wind had flushed through the canyon, and it seemed to cast all that luxurious scent straight down to the dog's nostrils. Rue was loving every bit of it, and it seemed to really solidify in his mind what he was truly doing on that tree. <laughs> 